our next inductee tonight from Virginia Beach. Who's from Virginia Beach? Jason Board says he is. He put his hand up. I've known Jason quite some time too. Uh, through travelling the East Coast and going to Virginia Beach. And uh, he says his favourite wave is first peak at Virginia Beach at the jetty there. Now, who, who surfed there? Who surfed there? I've actually seen it good. I've actually seen it good. I've had it good. I think once in the ten times I went there. <laughs> no, no. When it's good, it's good. Like anywhere in the world, when it's good, it's good. So like many of these people up here on the stage tonight, Jason came up through the ESA. He was an ESA All-Star. He won the ASP East Championships. He was a great competitor. But since then, he's written a few good books. He wrote the Kelly Slater autobiography, you know, like 10 years ago. I think he needs to do it again, right? <laughs> that was 10 years ago he wrote that book. It was a great book. But I think the best book he wrote is the one about surfing for kooks, <laughs> right? That's the best one. There it is, look, Kooks Guide to Surfing. I actually bought that. You know, because you know, we're all kooks at one point in time, right? So I thought if I read that book, I might even get, in, get better. Anyway, he's been a prolific person around our culture, both in the water as a competitor and with his great writing. And uh, he's done, of course, much writing for the surf magazines. And it's my great honour to bring from First Street, Virginia Beach, Jason Watt. Anti-hunter. Really... <laughs> Not that I'm anti-hunter, but I'm the anti-hunter. I don't really like to talk. So um, I wrote something. Actually, they used to have somebody come up and introduce each of us, and I, I told my son three months ago that he was going to have to introduce me. So he's had three months to kind of be nervous and uh, come up with a speech, and he finally got it all ready. And I just found out today that they don't do that anymore. So bring him up. He made me promise I wouldn't do that. No, you don't have to. You're good, you're good. So, I don't really like talking, but I wrote some stuff, and I don't know if it's a speech or what, but I'm going to try to read it, and if I can't get through it, I'll have him come up and help me. So. Um, I, I can't believe I shared a stage with Greg Noel and kind of shitting bricks up here just, just from that, but I figure language isn't an issue after Greg came on, so I pretty much say anything I want, so... I'm just going to try to read this and we'll see what happens, so. I was born a poor black child. Um, no, I mean, I think there's been a mistake and I'd like to call for a recount. I don't, I don't think I belong up here, really, but I was lucky. I had parents who uh, moved within biking distance of the beach when I was 12, and there's an hour-long bike ride, but when you're stoked, that's biking distance, I guess. Um, I was lucky I had a brother who let me tag along. I was lucky there was a whole crew at First Street, First Street in Virginia Beach um, that could push me, like Pete Smith, Mike Jones, Damian Bivick, Cap States, Brad Harrell, Drew Todd, Chris Todd, Jason Griffith, Seth Brody, Jeff Hunter, all these guys. Um, I was lucky there were older guys to kind of guide me, guys like Steve Avery, Brad Beach, John West, Paul West, uh, Joe Strickland, Twig, Harry Fentress, Smitty, Alan White, uh, somebody else. Ken Hunt, giddy up, cowboy. Um, I was lucky I had a wife who realized that surfing was my first love and let me do it quite a bit. So I was lucky Jesse Fernandez taught me a thing or two, about a thing or two. I was lucky Mez and Pooch took me on some surf trips, took some of these pictures. Um, I was lucky Steve Hawk taught me about writing and let me work at Surfer. Um, I was lucky I had the best surfer on the East Coast in the 80s to look up to, literally. Hey, Wes. Uh, sorry about roasting you when I presented you here a few years back, but what would you expect, you know? Um, and so eventually my brother tricked a local shop into paying me to surf, or talked him into it, I don't know, it seemed like he tricked him into doing it. But around that time I also started teaching people to surf, 
And I was lucky enough to travel doing camps with Matt Keckley, the oldest brown in the world, and the funniest. And uh, Keck taught me how to run a camp and, and how to trap giant Cuban rats. And uh, so I started my own camp, and I taught thousands of people to ride waves. Thousands of people. And, yeah, I'm that guy. So most surfers don't like the idea of other surfers, and you know we're selfish. We're selfish about people messing with our waves, and we're selfish about protecting the environment. So I figure if everyone surfs, then the world's in good hands because we won't let anyone ruin it. So. So whatever accomplishments put me here, I don't really give a shit. Um, I can say that, thanks, good. Um, I, all my trophies are gone. I think I had one from 1983, my first one, but that's it. So even this honor, I kind of tried to blow off, but my parents bought tickets, so. They said it was a big deal, so I sort of had to come. Um, I'm like, I didn't really do anything, you know? I was like any other kid who rode a wave and wanted to do it again and again and again, and I was lucky enough that I was pretty good at it, and so I got to kind of make a living at it. But um, what I did to get here isn't really important to me, it's what I do with it that matters, and I think when you're lucky, you pay it forward, and I don't, I don't see enough people doing that. I see plenty of people trying to cash in on surfing. I saw thousands of them walking around today. Um, and good. Good luck to them. But, uh, so I, I quit surfing a few years back just to see what would happen. Um, I'd had plenty of waves and wanted to let some other people get a few. Um, I, didn't, I quit for a year. I didn't die. I didn't forget how to surf. I wasn't angry. I learned. I grew. And it made me appreciate just how lucky I've been. And people pay me to teach them how to surf now, but lots of people can't and won't get to experience this thing. Um, I teach middle school in a kind of rough area. And if anyone asked, I was sick today, so. Um, I think about what surfing can do for those kids. You know, I look at Kelly, and he was poor. His life, his family was crumbling, and he went surfing to get away from that. And riding waves was kind of his getaway, so. Um, I get to borrow a school bus in the summertime, and I get to pick up these poor kids and take them surfing, and they realize They realize that they can surf and that they can step off the edge of the earth and walk on the water and then they realize they can do anything. And uh, if one of these kids ends up getting to uh, see some of the places I've seen, to meet some of the people I've met, to live the life I've been lucky enough to live, or just gets the confidence to follow his dreams, then I will have accomplished something. Like Kylie Jenner said, this is like the year of just like realizing stuff. Thanks. You see, when you have journalistic skills, you can write a good speech, right? <laughs>